All right, let's uh, try this again. I just recorded it and then I couldn't find where I didn't record it right for some reason. Um, so we are going to do lesson four, rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. And hopefully this is recording. Okay. Um, we have done parallelograms in lessons one and two, three, mostly two and three, we've done parallelograms. All different properties for parallelograms. So we're going to start by reviewing parallelograms. So if you'll notice, um, what we're going to review these. These are five ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. You only need one of these to prove that your quadrilateral is a parallelogram. You can either have, you can either prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. If that's the case, if both sides of opposite both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, we know it's a parallelogram. Second way is we can say both pairs of opposite sides are equal. So if this side equals this side and this side equals this side, <clears throat> then we know it's a parallelogram. Or you could say the two, um, two opposites are parallel and equal. So if you have this side equal to this side and they're also parallel, then you know it's a parallelogram. So equal and parallel. Or you could have this side equals this side, with this side being parallel to this side, we know it's a parallelogram. It's also, a quadrilateral is also a parallelogram if, if both pairs of opposite angles are equal. So if this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle, then you know it's a parallelogram. This angle does not have to equal this one, just opposite ones have to equal each other, then you know it's a parallelogram. And finally, you know it's a parallelogram if the diagonals bisect each other. So you would know they bisect each other is if this segment equals this segment and this segment equals this segment. Now they don't have to be, the diagonals are not going to be equal necessarily in a parallelogram. So let's move on to uh, rectangles. Theorem 40 says all rectangles are parallelograms. So here we have a rectangle. It's easy to prove just by talking about it that this rectangle is a parallelogram. The way we know that is we can use a couple different ones of these different uh, proofs up here. We know in a rectangle both pairs of opposite sides are equal. And we know in a rectangle both pairs of opposite sides are equal. So we know that a rectangle is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are equal. We also know that the opposite angles in a rectangle are equal. Because they're all 90 degrees, we know that this one will equal this one, and this one will equal this one. So it's easy to prove that a rectangle is a parallelogram. I have these figures marked up because I just did this earlier, and it didn't work, so I'm doing it again. The diagonals of a rectangle are equal. The way that we can prove that is we're going to prove that this blue triangle right here is equal to the green triangle right here. And if the two triangles are congruent, then we know their parts, which would be the diagonals, are equal. And that's what we're trying to prove. So we know that all the angles in the rectangle are equal. We have those marked. We know that if we're doing the blue triangle, we're going to have this one is equal to this one in the green triangle. We know that this one is in both triangles. It's in the blue triangle and it's in the green triangle. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. So we know that this side is equal to this side. We can prove the blue triangle is congruent to the, rect the green triangle by side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. So therefore, we know that this side of this triangle is equal to this side of this triangle, which happen to be the diagonals. So that proves that the diagonals of a rectangle are equal. Keep in mind, if it's not a rectangle, the diagonals of other parallelograms are not equal. Then let's go down to rhombuses. This is a rhombus right here. This is a rhombus with all, all the angles equal. That's not necessarily the case. A quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if all the sides are equal. In a rhombus, unless the rhombus is a square, the angles are not necessarily equal. 
but we can show that all rhombuses are parallelograms the same way that we can show that all rectangles are parallelograms. If the opposite sides are equal, then it's a parallelogram. And obviously, in a rhombus, the opposite sides are equal. The opposite angles would also be equal because it's, done, it's a parallelogram. And theorem 43, it says the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. This one can be proved by the construction theorem that we learned. It says, in a plane, two points each equal distance from the endpoints of a line segment determine the perpendicular bisector of the line segment. So we have, this, this is the line segment. We have um, an equal distant point from the endpoints, which would form the perpendicular bisector. So they would form right angles. So this is only true in a rhombus and a square, because that the, the um, what are these things called? The diagonals will form right angles that are perpendicular. In a rhombus, unless it's a square, the diagonals are not necessarily going to be equal. Diagonals are equal in a in a rectangle and in a square. Now, for we don't have to prove all this for square because every square is a rhombus, every square is a rectangle, and every square is a parallelogram. Therefore, squares, every property that we talked about is true for a square as well as for a rectangle, a rhombus, and a parallelogram. So that's it for lesson four. If you have any questions, make sure you go on the help board. There's a lot of application because we're going to know that this this segment equals this side, you're going to be solving for x, you just set those equal to each other. And you want to do the odd proofs. Make sure you understand them, if not, please go on the help board.